So let's have a look on that. How does it look? And what is the difference of a firmware update that, as it is done currently in the, um, let's say, in a traditional manner, um, when the vehicle comes into a garage, it is hooked up to a VCI, and basically a PC on wheels is coming to the, to the car, and there is running all kinds of diagnostic software on this PC, um, first off, determining the status of the vehicle, uh, what kind of ECUs are there inside the vehicle, what is their current status, which firmware versions, and so on. And then the update package is individually configured on this PC in a, with, a, with a connection to the OEM backend. Um, and then, of course, um, the update is eventually run from this PC um, into, the, into the car. This can take several hours, actually. And, um, and this PC basically does all the orchestration of the update over the dif different embedded controllers in the car. So when we go to the over-the-air update process, uh, we need some additional, very obviously, we need some additional parts, um, like the CCU that has been very prominent today, um, the connectivity unit. First off, this... Um, this is very essential, of course, to, to provide the connectivity over the air um, into the uh, Bosch IoT cloud uh, fr from the car. But this also uh, serves for the purpose to run this um, actual flash runtime, because there needs to be some intelligence in the car that takes over the part of this workshop PC before. And this could also be in the CCU, or actually this could also be in any other um, controller in the car that is powerful enough, because you need some, some calculating power and you need some, of course, storage, depending on how big the updates are that you need to run. Yeah? So what is the, uh, the update workflow for an over-the-air update? Um, it starts with an initial authoring step. In this initial authoring step, uh, basically the update package is configured. So here the, the engineer puts together um, the, the content package with all the meter information and diagnostic sequence. So a diagnostic sequence could, for example, uh, be what, what needs to be the state of the vehicle when the update is run. Uh, does the um, battery have to be at a certain level? Does the vehicle have to be in, stand in standstill? Probably, mostly, it has to be. Is there um, um, a driver interaction involved? Um, or is it a silent update? And all this kind of information is put together in the authoring step. This is uploaded in the uh, Bosch IoT cloud. And um, then all these IoT services come in that, that run on the cloud. Um, like in the vehicle management, um, the, the firmware management, where basically these update packages are being managed, the rollout management, and uh, of course the very important part is also the reporting, the reporting and analytics, because all this of course needs to be needs to be documented and traceable also, in, uh, and uh, this is also a very important part. And, and 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 of course what we see on the right side, all the uh, security related services. Uh, key management, certificate management, encryption and decryption. This will not be a, a focus of this talk, but this is, of course, certainly a very important point of uh, firmware updates that go into um, the vehicle powertrain. And then eventually, the vehicle connects to the Bosch IoT cloud. Um, it asks, in most cases, most customers look at a, just a regular polling, looking for updates, is there checking for updates, is there new firmware available for me? And, um, uh, and then the uh, content, if there's an update available, it's being downloaded into the vehicle. And then, of course, the information of the current status is going back. We have to do here with a lot of dumb embedded controllers. And a vehicle update is a lot more complicated than just an update of, of let's say, a, a, a smart device like a, like a smartphone or a, or a PC. Because here, usually, typically, an update is not just one concerning one controller, but it's going really baseline-driven from one baseline to another baseline, and it could typically 
you have several ECUs that need to be updated to new versions, and you just want to tell the, the vehicle to go from one baseline to another, so you need some instance in the vehicle that orchestrates this, in which order need, does the update uh, need to be run, and so on. Yeah? And this is one very important point um, about f firmware updates in the automotive context. So, now we've reached the point of the live demo. I hope we're really connecting to the cloud services now. But before we do that, just let me, let me briefly explain what we do in this demo. We have um, a real CCU. This is a CCU um, sample board, yeah, but this is uh, one, one of the CCUs from CM. Um, this connects via CAN to the ECU. This is an MDG-1 ECU that was mentioned also before. It's, it's an engine controller from um, DGS. So this is a true CAN connection. There is, um, this connects via GSM to the, to the cloud. And then we have, um, in addition to that, we have a head unit here. This is simulated so that you can see it. Um, this is um, what the driver would see in the vehicle. Yeah? So currently, the software is up to date, and what I will do now is we will um, sign a new update for this vehicle, which will, in this case, this is, of course, a very simple update because it would just take too long to do a full update. This would just um, set a new engine idle speed on this ECU, so it really writes an, an, a new idle speed into the ECU. This is the demonstrator. This is our CCU here, and um, we assign it, and now... Uh, Hopefully, if everything works, the driver will see that there's an update available. So the update run, we saw it download, install, and verify. And um, yeah, it was successful. Now we have a new speed. Um, it's the nature of software updates that we don't see much here, so nothing happened here. <laughs> but you just have to believe us that we really wrote a new calibration value in this. Yeah? Thank you.